is our special interview here on Morning Wave in Busan. You know, last week's record-breaking heat wave across much of Europe was made at least five times more likely to happen by climate change, according to scientists. And I don't know if this has anything to do with climate change either. But I've, if you've seen the photos from uh, Guadalajara, Mexico, of this hailstorm. In, uh, at this time of year, um, yes, definitely, it seems things something's going on. Let's find out more about this very issue with Dr. Axel Timmerman, a distinguished professor at Busan National University and the founding director of the Institute for Basic Science Center for Climate Physics. Hi, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Catherine. Yes. Yeah, so um, it says that you're the director of the Institute for uh, for Basic Science Center, the IBS Center for Climate Physics (ICCP) in Korea. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself first, and also about this center? Mm -hmm, sure. Yes, <clears throat> I'm a climate uh, physicist. So we study the physics of past, present, and future climate. Um, and our center was founded in uh, 2017. Currently, we have about 40 employees. And also last uh, year, our center uh, bought, in collaboration with the IBS headquarter in Daejeon, uh, Korea's third uh, fast supercomputer to simulate future climate change with uh, actually a very unprecedented resolution. Ah, yes, yes. And it seems that um, the World Meteorological Organization, or WMO, predicted record-breaking heat waves for the fifth consecutive year around the world this year with, uh, once again, many parts of Europe seeing really uh, these heat waves of more than 40 degrees Celsius over the weekend. Um, can you tell us about this recent heat wave in Europe? Mm -hmm, sure. So first of all, there are naturally occurring heat waves. These are just weather phenomena, um, and they're associated with very stagnant high-pressure uh, systems, and that in Europe in particular bring warm air from the uh, African continent from Sahara towards Europe. Mm. Um, and, of course, there in, then there is global warming, uh, so totally independent, but actually global warming also has an effect on these naturally occurring heat waves, so there is an interaction. And it turns out that, of course, greenhouse gases uh, increase the temperature on our planet. Yes. But also in particular for heat waves, these are high pressure systems. Also, the greenhouse gas uh, atmospheric warming profile is such that it makes these high pressure uh, systems more stagnant and more stable. So they can linger around for longer and stay longer and also accumulate more heat. Oh. So less cold air is mixed actually into these uh, heat waves, into these high pressure systems. And that makes them particularly uh, treacherous. And it turns out that, uh, well, the current uh, heat wave in, in Europe uh, is extremely unusual. Mm. Uh, nothing like this has ever been uh, recorded, in particular in southern France, all records ever uh, recorded were broken. Yes. Um, and so there is an idea, of course, that global warming increases the frequency and the severity and sometimes also the duration of these heat waves. Right. Uh, and recent estimates suggest that maybe a factor of five uh, increase in the frequency of these heat waves has already occurred over the past 50 years. Mm. And, um, and not just uh, in terms of the high temperatures, but it seems, um, you know, more and more so these heat waves are coming very early on. Is that just um, a layperson's perception or is it actually true? Mm. Of course, the uh, heat wave currently in Europe uh, is extremely early, so it started uh, in June, extends yes. all the way to early uh, July. Usually you would see these heat waves occurring uh, at the end of July yes. and towards August. Uh, whether this has something to do with climate change is a bit difficult to say. We always have to keep in mind mm -hmm. it's a naturally occurring weather phenomenon, yes. but it gets an extra boost uh, from factors related to global warming. It's like a heat wave uh, on steroids. Uh, and yes. of course, uh, future heat waves uh, are going to become even much more extreme and severe. And we can think about, let's say, uh, if we continue our greenhouse gas emissions following, let's say, our cur current uh, scenario, or if we continue business as usual, yes. um, these heat waves that we experience right now, extreme heat waves, mm -hmm. will become the normal summer temperature. Ah. everyday summer temperature in about 80 years from now. Goodness. So what is extreme right now will become the norm in about 50 to 80 years, ah. unless we reduce our C2 emissions. Yes, and speaking of which, uh, it seems that the Netherlands, also uh, Denmark, 
and um, other cities or countries are really moving to ban diesel and gasoline power vehicles from entering certain cities or at least are considering a ban on such vehicles. Uh, even recently in Madrid, there was um, a strong protest uh, in support of a plan to ban old diesel or gasoline vehicles from entering its city. Does emissions have a direct effect on global warming? Yes, of course. I mean, first of all, the transportation sector that you're mentioning yes. contributes only 23%, I think, to the global CO2 emissions. Uh, but let's say the total CO2 emissions and the largest contributor still being major production and industry, um, they influence um, our climate. So mm. CO2 is a greenhouse gas and it keeps the heat essentially uh, partly in the atmosphere. Mm. Normally, our planet, when it uh, warms, let's say during daytime, it yes. wants to radiate the uh, radiation back to space to cool it uh, to a normal temperature. However, this radiation is uh, that normally would go out back to space is uh, trapped additionally by the additional greenhouse gas concentrations that we uh, put in the, into the atmosphere. So it's coming back to us in some way. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a greenhouse effect. And it's a, it's a normal physics uh, phenomenon. It's mm. a result essentially of quantum physics. Um, so the same kind of physics that, that drives our cell phones and semiconductors and so on is also responsible, if oh. you like, for the greenhouse effect. So it's, oh, it's nothing uh, special. Um, and it's very well known for over 150 years. Uh, people have, have known about this. Mm. Uh, the key point is, of course, we want to understand not only that it's warming up, but we also want to understand where is it warming? What effect will it have on precipitation? Uh, what effect will it have on the frequency of heat waves and so on and so forth? Mm. And that's where we actually need uh, computer models uh, to understand and, and probe and test the climate system by introducing, uh, for example, CO2 uh, emissions into the future and see what the climate uh, in a computer simulation would look like. I see. Well, um, there are many listeners, of course, uh, most of which are in Korea. Um, they're very much concerned about the current climate here on the peninsula. Can you tell us about the current status of the climate here on the Korean peninsula as compared to uh, the past? Of course. Uh, so we can we can position ourselves uh, in Busan, yes. uh, and maybe most of your listeners are in Busan sure. currently. Mm -hmm. uh, so over the last about 100 years, the temperature in Busan has warmed up by about 1.5 to 1.7 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. uh, most of it can be attributed already to global warming. Mm. So this is uh, a very clear sign that global warming is already knocking at our doors. Yes. Uh, now, if we uh, increase, if we don't uh, cut down CO2 emissions drastically, if we just uh, continue our business as usual, <clears throat> in that case, the temperatures in Busan would uh, rise over the next 80 years by another 4 to 5 degrees Celsius. Uh, and that is what I was just referring to, that the heat wave, yes. the worst heat wave that we experienced uh, will become the normal summer day. Mm. Uh, and this is uh, essentially a simple equation that might be true for a lot of areas on our planet. Yes. The extremes of the last hundred years, the worst extremes become kind of the normal conditions mm. for temperature. Mm. Rainfall is a more complicated story, however. Mm. Uh, well, um, you know, of course, just thinking about it, you know, that these extremes are going to become the norm. Well, how can we actually, uh, you know, change our behavior to, to minimize or at least try to minimize, if not reverse the effects? Well, I guess uh, there are many ways. I mean, personally, of course, people can try to save uh, energies or drive more uh, efficient cars. Uh, there are many ways also in buildings uh, to improve uh, insulation, uh, mm. obtain more um, effective cooling power, also AC cooling power, maybe using deeper ocean temperatures, bringing up colder water from the deep ocean is another possibility to cool down buildings. Uh, so there are many uh, ways in principle uh, where not necessarily uh, fossil fuels need to be burned. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, on a national scale, yes. uh, the uh, very, let's say, um, progressive um, CO2 emission uh, reduction plans need to be uh, implemented. Uh, but then, of course, uh, this is a global problem. Even if, if Korea had very progressive uh, plans, 
uh, and other countries don't, uh, mm. it does not really make much of a difference. So then it's all about climate diplomacy and ah. really getting everybody uh, on board. This is not very uh, easy right now in the current political situation where some of the countries have essentially decided not to uh, follow the uh, the Paris uh, Accord or the Paris Agreement uh, due to political reasons. Namely the and, US, but, yes. Mm. Namely the US, of yes. course. <clears throat> and this is something uh, of great concern because and if, if we just say, if I drive to work today in my car, yes, mm -hmm. I will emit CO2 molecules. These, the question is how many of these molecules will still be in the atmosphere, let's say, in 1,000 years. Mm. Uh, or let's just say 100 years. Okay. It turns out uh, about 40, 30 to 40 percent of the CO2 molecules that I'm bringing up into the atmosphere today yes. will still be there in the atmosphere in 100 years from now. Wow. Uh, and maybe about uh, 10 to 20 percent of the same molecules will be up there in about 1,000 years. So we're creating an enormous legacy, a climate change legacy for not only our children, but for many, many future generations. So the decisions that we make right now, they will not only affect our children, grandchildren, they will affect our future generations for, mm. for essentially, let's say, 20, 30 generations. Ah. So this is a huge responsibility that we have, and it's not only a global problem, but it's one that has very long-term effects. And we have not really come up with diplomatic um, tools to really resolve these extremely abstract but then on the other hand very real problems i mean the fact that temperatures in busan have already increased by 1.7 degrees celsius it means it's there it's it's knocking on our door right. so uh it's there but still the solution has to be global and long term and mm. that's, that's an interesting uh, issue Right. Well, thank you so much for explaining so thoroughly and succinct, succinctly uh, how this is affecting us right now as we speak and, of course, the future generations as well. Thank you so much for joining us today. We okay. do appreciate your time. Thank you, Catherine. A pleasure. Yes. And once again, this was Dr. Axel Timmerman, a distinguished professor at PNU and the founding director of this center, the Institute for Basic Sciences. Uh, some key words from this interview, climate diplomacy and also this enormous legacy that we are putting into the atmosphere into the climate for future generations so a lot of food to uh, chew on to consider things uh, to think about in the today at least for one day all right this was your special interview we're going